Hi everybody, today I'm going to have a little bit of fun, at least it's going to be fun for me. I want to test some various travel mugs and regular coffee mugs and see how long they all keep coffee or a beverage hot. And the reason why I'm doing this was I got this Muggo travel mug and I just did a review of it so that I don't have to do it here. Uh, but I got this Muggo electric travel mug, so check out that uh, review if you, if you want uh, more information on this mug. But I got this, and it's supposed to keep beverages hot for, I think it said, up to three hours. So number one, I want to test that, see if it actually does that. But number two, I think that a regular vacuum sealed mug, like this Contigo, or however you say that, I think it keeps beverages pretty hot for maybe an equivalent amount of time. So I really want to compare the Muggo versus the normal vacuum sealed uh, mug. And then while I'm doing this, I figured I'd go through a bunch of different mugs. So, so let me break down the contenders in this little competition today. So first off, we've got the Muggo. Advertises that we're gonna have three hours of heat out of this one. Uh, we will see. Then we have three different Contigo uh, vacuum mugs, vacuum travel mugs. The reason why I'm doing three of them is I've had some experience here in the past where I feel like they're not keeping a beverage very hot. So I wonder if the vacuum's been broken out of one or more of them. So I'm going to kind of pit all three of these against each other as well as uh, against the Muggo. And then I've got some more traditional uh, coffee cups. First of all, this one I guess isn't traditional. This is an Ember 14 ounce mug, uh, electric mug that I drink from every day. So I'm kind of interested to see how long that lasts. I'm guessing it'll be about an hour. When I, when I get out of the world of $100 mugs and I'm just going to uh, regular mugs in my shelf, this is my favorite mug. It's a really heavy ceramic mug, really good quality. Uh, shout out to Taylor's Made Right, love that place. The, uh, this one I think is gonna keep a beverage pretty hot, but we'll see. And then this is just a regular coffee mug. It's a little bit more lightweight, it's still ceramic. Uh, so decent quality, but I'm guessing that uh, we'll lose heat pretty fast in that. And then lastly, I'm going to pit it up against what you might pick up at a coffee shop or, uh, or wherever, a cafe, and see exactly how long that keeps your coffee hot and how, uh, how long it keeps it in the, what I'll call a Goldilocks zone. So there's the contenders. Okay, let's talk about the test setup just a little bit here, what I'm going to do. So I've got a kettle here. I'm going to put 12 ounces of water in each one of these cups or mugs that is 200 degrees. I am going to preheat each one of these mugs with 200 degree water. So the assumption is that the water is going into a mug that is already 200 degrees, so we're not losing a bunch of heat right away. Um, I'm going to, well, let me say, I like my coffee at 135 degrees. I am somewhat of a coffee snob, and that's partially because I have this Ember mug where you have to choose an exact temperature that you want your coffee at. I've found that I like 135 degrees, and uh, through years of doing that, I've become pretty sensitive to that. So really my, I'll call it the Goldilocks range, is in that maybe two degrees less, two degrees more. So what I'm interested in here is how long it takes these mugs first to enter that Goldilocks range. How long does it take to get down to 137 degrees? And then how long does it stay in the range? How long is this coffee drinkable between 137 degrees and 133 degrees? I'll probably continue to measure the temperature down about 120 degrees, which is just where you're going to dump a cup of coffee out, in, in my opinion. Uh, so this might take the majority of a day to do this because I think some of these mugs are going to take a lot of hours. So having said that, I don't want to constantly be taking the lid off of these, letting heat escape, and do the temperature checks on it. So for most of these uh, that have the closed lid. I'm just going to check them like every half an hour. Once they get close to that Goldilocks range, either entering or leaving it, I'll probably do it a little bit more frequently so I can find out exactly to the minute or to the five minute period uh, how how effective it was. Some of these with the open, or the, the ones with the open, I'll probably just check them every five minutes, uh, but I expect, uh, I expect the decay of the temperature uh, to be pretty predictable at a certain point. So that's the setup.
this, and I see why I don't like travel mugs. It takes forever for them to cool down to a temperature that's drinkable. None of these are drinkable yet in an hour. We got an a low end 155 on a Muggo. The other three are at 160. So we're still not in that Goldilocks range. I'm going to get the mugs going now. I forgot to charge my Ember. So got that charged up, ready to go. So we'll get that experiment going too. Okay, I am two and a half hours into this and we finally have all of the travel mugs drinkable. And I'm expanding my drinkable range. It was pretty tight before. I'm going to say anything between 130 to 140 is drinkable. The three Contigos finally hit 140 a couple minutes ago. Uh, the Muggo did it a little bit ago. But it took two and a half hours. It took two and a half hours to get these to a temperature that I could drink it, drink them. Okay, I've pretty much cleaned everything up here. I spent six hours measuring temperatures on all of these mugs. I'm going to put it into some sort of a form that is easily understood and I can draw some conclusions and I'll be right back. Hi there, I'm back. So I've got all the data into some charts and graphs. Uh, this is the graph of all of the data, but I'm going to break it into two so I can zoom in a little bit more closely here. I'm going to zip through these pretty fast, so if you want to stop and study the data at all, just pause the video. So this was the data for the open mugs, not the travel mugs. And I think uh, just a couple surprises out of this. First of all, how much of a benefit it was to have a cover on the cup. You can see the covered paper cup actually took 30 minutes before it even got down to 140 minutes or 140 degrees. The other surprise to me at least was how quickly the open mugs passed through the drinkable zone. And here are the travel mugs. As I stated in my video, I was a little surprised at how long it took to, for the mugs to become drinkable, right in there in the two to two and a half hour range. I was pretty happy with the Muggo. It kept uh, coffee hot for well beyond the three hours that were advertised. Uh, you can see a little bit of non-linearity uh, there about 145 degrees on the muggo because when i had the muggo set to about 131 132 which is where i thought i needed it to be it started turning on and started to try to keep it hot around 140 or mid 140 so you can see i kind of had to lower the temperature on the muggo a few degrees and it did level off at about 135. another thing to notice and you might not because the x-axis is a little bit compressed compared to the last chart is how long the coffee stayed drinkable in the Contigos at around 50 minutes, five zero minutes. That was uh, pretty good. It just took forever to get there. The last thing I want to point out is the difference in the Contigos. The two that have the exact same curve had the exact same uh, plastic lid on top. The third one, the red Contigo, had a slightly different design of lid, so I believe that's the difference there. And here's the data in tabular form, sorted by drinkable time. The Muggo was right in that uh, drinkable area for a full three hours, even after taking almost two hours to get there. So pretty happy with that. The Ember Mug uh, came in at about an hour for drinkable time, and then kind of went downhill from there. The Contigos uh, weren't great because of the length of time it took to get to the drinkable zone. And man, those uh, uncovered mugs passed through that zone in six minutes. Here's that same data sorted by how long it took to become drinkable. One thing I want to point out here is how long that paper cup was uh, able to keep the coffee hot above the drinkable area. So send somebody out uh, to the coffee shop to get coffee as long as they get it back to you in a half an hour or less, uh, you're still going to have a hot cup of coffee. So that was interesting. The other thing is that the Ember Mug was clearly the winner in this as far as uh, good quick time to get to drinkable. And then once it was drinkable, uh, stayed in that drinkable zone for nearly an hour. Hey there. So I spent like eight hours of my Saturday working on this. So if you find any shred of usefulness in it, please give me a like. My wife is not happy with me and uh, that would just make me feel a little bit better and something that I could show her to say that I at least helped somebody out. So give me a like if, if you found anything you liked about it.